Birth by Sleep. In a more recent time, a trio of Keyblade wielders named Ventus, Terra, and Aqua seek to complete their training and earn their mark of mastery, a symbol of Keyblade mastery that demonstrates one's ability to resist the darkness. Aqua and Terra are both being tested for the mark under the supervision of Master Eriquis and his colleague and current wielder of the Master of Masters Keyblade, Xehanort. Xehanort, however, tampers with the testing, allowing for the darkness to manifest during the trial. Aqua manages to overcome the challenge and earns her mark, but much to Xehanort's delight, Terra seems to have given in to the darkness. While Eriquis will not grant Terra the mark of mastery, he has need of both Terra and Aqua to address the matter of a growing number of creatures in the world called the Unversed. Eriquis then asks Aqua in secret to watch over Terra and make sure he doesn't stray into the darkness. Meanwhile, Ven is provoked into leaving as well by Xehanort's apprentice, Venitas. At this point, the three young Keyblade wielders' stories divide. Terra's journey has him seeking out the now missing Master Xehanort, who appears to be searching for the seven princesses of pure hearts. On his journey, he unwillingly collaborates with a number of Disney villains, including Maleficent, to discover the whereabouts of Xehanort. At one point, Terra visits a world called Destiny Islands, where he encounters a pair of young boys named Riku and Sora. Seeing the potential of heroism in the young Riku, Terra performs a ritual that marks Riku as the next in line to inherit Terra's Keyblade. When he finally locates the Master, Xehanort warns him that Eriquis is betraying Terra by holding back his potential and can't be trusted. This is only confirmed when Terra returns to Master Eriquis only to find him attacking Ventus. Terra intervenes and ultimately ends up slaying his teacher and father figure, driving Terra to flee. Ventus's tale, however, confronts the matter of Ven's dark past. A former disciple of Xehanort, the master pushed Ven to the limits to rip apart the boy's heart and parsing out the light from the dark. Ventus only survived the ordeal thanks to a young boy named Sora who agreed to lend the light of his heart to Ventus. Xehanort hopes to pit Ventus against his darker half, Venitas, to create a weapon known as the Keyblade. Looks like X-Blade, but it's pronounced Key. The ultimate and original Keyblade that is fabled to have the power to open up the heart of all worlds and the source of all light, Kingdom Hearts. When Ventus confronts Eriquis about this fact, Eriquis realizes that the only way to stop Xehanort from getting the X-Blade and Kingdom Hearts is to destroy Ven. The battle is interrupted by Terra, who kills Eriquis and drives Ven into despair. Aqua's journey is spent trying to find her two friends who she worries about. Visiting many worlds after Terra has visited them, she learns of all the horrible things Terra has done allying himself with the villains and fears that she is losing him to the darkness. She also struggles to convey her concerns to Ven, who lashes out at her like she was an over-concerned parent who doesn't understand Terra. Aqua too travels to Destiny Islands where she meets the young boys Riku and Sora. And while tempted to bestow her Keyblade to Sora, like she senses Terra did for Riku, she worries that it would ruin their friendship. Instead, she accidentally bequeaths her Keyblade to a young princess she encounters on the world of Radiant Gardens named Kairi, who unknowingly triggers the ritual by grabbing the handle of Aqua's Keyblade. Aqua also meets at several points with the powerful sorcerer Yen Sid and joins forces with his young apprentice, Mickey Mouse, across several worlds before ultimately learning of Eriquis' death and is ordered by Yen Sin to go find her friends at the Keyblade Graveyard. The three friends reunite twice in their journeys. The first is at Radiant Gardens, after they have each had run-ins with Xehanort's newest lackey, a guard by the name of Bregg who wants the power that Xehanort is offering. The last time is at the Keyblade Graveyard, the site where the countless years ago the Foretellers and the Unions did battle and brought about the destruction of Light. It's here where the climactic showdown with the Grand Puppet Master behind their conflicts as well as the creator of the Unverse, Master Xehanort and his apprentice Venitas occurs. Ven and Aqua face off against Venitas only for Ven to have his heart absorbed and turned into the Keyblade. Aqua is able to defeat Venitas with the help of Mickey. 
Terra, however, faces off with Xehanort himself, but is defeated when Xehanort uses the Master of Masters Keyblade to unlock his own heart and transfer into Terra's body, which turns his long hair a stark white and makes his eyes glow yellow. Or how you guys would say, Norded. However, Terra's pure willpower is bound to his Keyblade armor, which acts on its own to strike down Terra Nort. At the same time, Aqua's defeat of Vanitas and the shattering of the now declared imperfect X-Blade triggers a massive pillar of light to consume the graveyard. Terra Nort is swept away, Terra's lingering will stays planted there, and Aqua and Ven flee to be found by Mickey. In the aftermath of the battle, Aqua takes Ven's now heartless body back to the Land of Departure where they were raised by Eriquis. The Land of Departure has been consumed by the darkness after Master Eriquis' death, but Aqua carries Ven into the throne room of the palace and uses Eriquis' keyblade to put the entire castle into a secret lockdown mode. She places Ven in a room where only those who already know where it is can find it and leaves sealing the reformed castle, now dubbed Castle Oblivion, promising to return to wake Ven up. Aqua then travels to Radiant Gardens to find Terra Nort, who has lost many of his memories. In attempting to help him, she triggers Xehanort's dominant control on the body, and they have one final battle before Terra Xehanort tries to unlock his heart once more, wiping his mind and sinking Terra's body into the darkness. Aqua dives in after him, but once he becomes clear that they won't be able to escape together in time before the gateway closes, she grants Terranort her armor and sends them back to Radiant Gardens where Bragg has brought his lord Ansem the Wise to see the amnesiac boy. Aqua floats off into the darkness, her only comfort being that her friends are safe. Xehanort stopped and the Unverse dealt with. Finally. Ventus's lost little heart finds a new home safely within the heart of a boy who shared his light with him before, Sora. In the next chapter, I will be reading about a fragmentary passage, part one. Thank you for listening.